Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, this is the Oracle Machine Learning uh, Office Hours. Today we have the OML Usage Highlight, a live demo of Oracle Stream Analytics with OML, AutoML UI, and OML services. And uh, this is going to be presented by Hadi Javaharian, a solution engineer on the app dev and integration team. And uh, myself, Marcus and Sibia, and Mark Kornick and Sherry are going to be uh, supporting. So anytime you guys have any questions, please feel free to write that in the uh, Q&A. Basically, the topics for today, are we're going to be just highlight a few upcoming sessions, and then we're going to talk about um, the uh, session. And then at the end, we're, the, we're going to work with the Q&A. So these are the upcoming sessions, um, just to give you a, an idea. So for next week, we're planning on an OMA for Pi updated hands-on lab. We're still working on the details um, that might slip um, and if that happens, we're going to probably see it in, in October at some point. But um, the idea then is for October 5th, uh, using uh, third-party Python packages from Python, SQL, and REST. Uh, then on October 12th, a time series analysis. Um, and then November uh, 2nd, a weekly session. November 9th, um, a leverage UML algorithms in retail uh, science platform. So. Um, without further ado, I'll uh, uh, give it up uh, to uh, Hadi. Uh, thank you very much, Hadi, for joining us today. And the floor is yours. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Marcos and uh, Mark, for the invitation. Um, it, so today, you know, I'm, I've, I've been um, working with uh, uh, these two products, Golden Gate Stream Analytics and, um, and OML, uh, for a while now. And uh, um, what I um, came up with this um, scenario where we could integrate these two uh, uh, products in a very nice, uh, you know, low code, uh, no code as far as the OML part is concerned, um, into one sort of a scenario use case, um, and and sh and show you this uh, in the demo. And before, but before I I did the, uh, I do that, I wanted to kind of uh, show you how this sort of applies to the general idea of data mesh and data fabric and data product. Um, and so this is something that's been uh, getting a lot of attention uh, recently in the industry. And here at the Oracle, we really focused on this uh, idea. And in the forums, obviously, we're getting a lot of attention and recognition from Forrester, um, Gardner. As you can see, Oracle is a leader in this space. Um, you know, um, ThoughtWorks also uh, has uh, given us a lot of recognition there. Um, and so, um, so variety of uh, sort of fo uh, forums have recognized that Oracle is a leader in this in this uh, space. So, what I wanted to do is I wanted to start with the idea of uh, data product and sort of uh, a data capital, where we really need to look at the data as a sort of a capital, not a mineral, oil, or gas that you can actually mine out there, but it's something that you be to be created and then used um, as by the consumers. So think of data product as a sort of a, you know, something that it's, it's not a product, but it's a, it's a byproduct. Um, and, uh, and so uh, it, in a data mesh kind of a thinking, in a data product kind of a thinking, data mesh is a sort of a data tier architecture um, that you can say is to integrate data assets and data products across multiple um, cloud environments. And there's a lot of uh, definitions for uh, these two terms, data mesh and data fabric, to sort of interchangeable. But it depends on how you look at it. It's been sort of in out in the uh, in the industry, and it's getting a lot of attention. And so some of the attributes of that in the data mesh environment, you have to have a decentralized um, environment, right? It has to be um, in it, so it can be used in a multi-cloud, right? And then the second. The um, feature of that would be event ledgers, events uh, that could be at the edge uh, from IoT sensors, or it could be transactional, any kind of a transactional um, a kind of a source that comes in into, uh, to, into a data mesh. And of course, it has to be, uh, has some polyglot um, sort of features. It has to be multiple formats. But uh, when it comes to the consumer, the consumer doesn't care what format that is. It could be in JSON, it could be in, in REST, in any kind of a format that the, the consumer kind of uh, uses that. And then in terms, in terms of uh, uh, data ledgers, we sort of uh, look at two sets of um, uh, data. One would be a sort of a trail file that comes in 
uh, in Golden Gate, and the other one would be IoT type data uh, that comes in sort of a, a, as, a, as a Kafka source. And in terms of data products, obviously, we start with the um, variety of data that comes in, uh, order, checkout, cart, this, this kind of data comes in uh, basically 24 7 nonstop. Some of it is noise. That data gets sort of transformed a little bit and then sort of, uh, you know, kind of refined. And it comes up to the top, becomes a data product, but in, when it actually gets used by the consumers, right? So the variety of data products, one of the examples would be a um, machine learning feature. The other one would be a machine learning model, uh, would be a type of a data product. And there, there's other types of data products, but uh, in this case, we want to focus on specific in machine learning and machine models and um, sort of stream analytics. Again, as I mentioned in a um, data mesh, it, it has to be decentralized, not like hub and spoke type model. You really need to adopt a uh, decentralized event processing model, such as let's say a locomotive that sends thousands of sensor data points uh, to the server and this raw data at the source uh, comes in, it helps create the data product through this data mesh architecture to be consumed by the by the consumers, right? So you can think of the source data, right? Raw data, and then the target data, basically refined data ready to be used. Or you can look at it as operational data um, that comes in versus analytical data. So this is sort of the, um, sort of a sort of a source and target um, type definitions. And again, in a data mesh, as you can see, this this diagram looks a little bit too busy, but then this variety of use cases that apply. You can, you know, a Tesla car has, um, you know, thousands of uh, sensor data that, that comes in, that data comes to the edge and gateways, it gets filtered, and then you can process that through um, stream analytics. Um, so, and also in a, in a data pipeline, what we define a data pipeline, you really need to that data pipeline to be prepared when it comes as, uh, it comes as raw data, um, it needs to be prepared and curated in a type of data mesh environment. As you can see, there's a sort of a data lake there. And data mesh sort of curates that, uh, that data and then sends that data to the final targets in a variety of formats, right? One of them would be a, a notebook in machine learning or a machine learning model that will show you that how easy it is to create that through these OML services and be, uh, be able to consume that. In a stream analytics itself, um, you have a variety of data sources that, co that come in in formats like Golden Gate, Kafka, and JMS, any kind of a format, that data gets ingested into the stream analytics, right? And then we have these rich set of patterns that we apply to uh, this data, right? And I'll show you a little bit of that in the, in the demo. Once you apply these patterns, then you, you know what we call the sort of the highlight of Stream Analytics is a pipeline where you create this pipeline and run some analytics on it, machine learning in this particular case, uh, we're gonna use AutoML. And then once you're done with your, your analysis and so on, send that data downstream to variety of targets. You know, you send that data to object storage, you know, MongoDB, uh, Ignite Apache, Ignite Hive, S3 and so on. And I'll show you a little bit of that. And again, in terms of data product, there's a variety of data products and this sort of covers a little bit of that, um, you, know, you may have a, a dashboard with, where, where your consumer or your, uh, your end sort of uh, analysis uh, needs to have some kind of a dashboard showing some data, right? That's, that's one data product. But the other one would be a time series, spatial and analytics. They can apply to a sort of a, a bandwidth of data set and you just want, you're interested in that particular bandwidth, right? And, or in the top middle, uh, in that pipeline, we, we are basically using this no-code uh, pipeline uh, throughout the entire um, you know, sort of a live streaming of live data and creating the, what we call these stages. And these stages, I'll show you a little, a little bit, are themselves uh, can be considered a type of um, data product. And of course, top right corner is um, we're applying machine learning to the data set and you being able to use that you know, Onyx is coming up as far as the stream, stream analytics, but uh, you know, you can actually call an Onyx model 
But in this particular case, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use AutoML UI to actually be able to um, run the, um, create the, a model and use it. And again, the AutoML UI is obviously a, um, you know, kind of a um, familiar slide to OML users, but there's a pipeline of, um, you know, series of sequences that, that happens. It's you start with the algorithm selection, um, you do some sampling to the algorithm, uh, use on some feature selection, very important in a machine learning uh, concept, feature selection, and the tuning of that model. Again, all this is seamlessly done behind the scene for you through AutoML UI, which is really sort of has, uh, you know, um, you know, has caught my attention, you know, for this specific use case, and I decided to um, kind of marriage that with the uh, stream analytics. In terms, of, in terms of architecture in the stream analytics, you're looking at two types of pipelines. One pipeline starts with a raw data set. That raw data set, an initial data set that you have uh, that comes in, you basically need to enrich that data set. Whatever you need to do, it, add some derived features, or if you can ma manage uh, the balancing of the data set, right? Do something with that data set through a pipeline in stream analytics, then send that pipeline as a target to autonomous. And I'll, I'm going to show you how I will switch to auto my autonomous UI, uh, generate that model, uh, the, you know, the, create a model, deploy that as OML services, and go back to stream analytics, create another pipeline. That pipeline is going to be a consumer of my data product, that data product being the model that I just generated, right? And in, in the meantime, in that, during that pipeline, itself create more data products, right? Um, so start with sort of uh, raw data, Kafka, JMS, Golden Gate, um, as data feed, prepare that data, again, in, in actual use case, process it. When it comes time, call some risk call, risk API call to OML services, the model that I just generated a few minutes ago, right? And um, apply additional patterns, statistics, um, you know, whatever you need to do, process that, to the end, that data and send it downstream to your target for it to be consumed, right? Um, and again, remember that original slide with the sort of a busy data mesh architecture? This is sort of the architecture specific to this particular use case. And the use case is that, is that we have a scenario where our customer is a company that owns and runs vending machines all around the world, right? These vending machines um, send data at the edge um, through IoT sensors, right? Um, and based on that data, we would like to predict when um, these machines are likely to malfunction, specifically run hot or any other um, errors, or run out of stock, right? So that's, that's the prediction where machine learning comes in. So my raw data comes here and on the top left, right? Into stream analytics, I massage that data, curate it, I prepare that data, and create a data a training pipeline. Once I'm done, happy with my um, data set, I'm going to set that training data to autonomous, so AutoML. Go to AutoML, gen quickly generate a model, deploy it, come back to stream analytics as I showed in the, in the architecture, create another pipeline, and use that model in the scoring, right? Once I'm done with the scoring in this particular use case, um, I, I send that data to my final target. That final target um, could be object storage, could be a data lake, uh, could be a variety of targets. As you can see, these targets are all supported there. And in this particular use case, it's going to be Apache Kafka, uh, where my maintenance team, the, the company's maintenance team, taps into that uh, Kafka topic, gets that data, goes to the site, maintains the machine, whatever it is, or another team can go and stop the machine, maybe two separate teams, right? Once they are done, and that maintenance record, again, gets uploaded to the stream analytics and then gets ready for the next cycle, right? So this is sort of ongoing, real-time, um, uh, sort of a, in, a, in a data mesh kind of a, uh, environment, right? So let me switch quickly to, um, basically in stream analytics, there's a variety of, um, references or sources, resources that we use. The main one being a pipeline. I have these pipelines defined here. I'm going to basically in this pipeline, in this particular pipeline, what I did is I started with, uh, again, these bubbles each represent a stage. And at this stage, if I click on one of these stages, you'll see that 
the data for that particular space just shows up, nothing else, right? So it's pretty, pretty impressive streaming, live streaming data. My machine sensors are sending data. Basically, I, I captured that data. I curate it. I prepare it with some machine details, machine ID, where they're located, and so on. And in this stage, they are prepared, right? As you can see, each stage has its own set of data as, as, as they come in, right? I prepare that data. Once I'm happy with that data, again, this is a little bit too simplistic pipeline, but imagine you can get very elaborate with this. And once I'm ready, I send that data to my final target. In this particular case, my target is autonomous, and I have two separate tables there, right? One that keeps track of how many days it takes for this machine to run hot, right? Uh, and, you know, prediction, sort of a prediction. The other one would be another table where how many days, how many days will it take for this particular machine to run low on inventory, right? So two sets of targets. I send that, that, to my, that data to my target. Then I quickly switch to see how quickly that was. And I quickly go to um, uh, my um, autonomous. I'm, I go on auto ML, right? I go on auto, I create a model in auto ML, right? And, and again, in here, I can define data source, um, uh, you know, and I'll go to, through this uh, a little bit quickly. Um, you know, I go through this data, how many, not how many days it will take for, uh, for it to, uh, the machine to start hot, right? I, it, this is the data set that I exported to autonomous, right? And then I, I define a, uh, what my target looks like, how many days, and my uh, sort of case ID would be my machine ID. And then I run a regression um, sort of a type um, uh, model, right, I, uh, through the training. And I start this, and in a matter of minutes, I have a model. So I'm not going to do this again because I've, I have some models prepared here. Um, I go to my model um, screen. Um, these, as you can see, these models are already done here for me. Again, these tips, these, the days that are running uh, high, uh, you know, how many days before they run, the machines run into high temperature. And the model, we gave, the AutoML gave me five choices. Pretty impressive, right? And I've kind of sort of um, um, tested these. They look really good. I picked the uh, support vector machine model uh, for, my, uh, for my use case, right? And I clicked on it and I deployed it. I deployed it and, and now I have a model here, right? Deployed in OML services ready to be used, right? Um, so SVMG not pulling and then low inventory, right? So that's ready to be used. I switch back to my stream analytics, create another pipeline. In this pipeline, again, you notice, remember from the, from the diagram, from this slide, my maintenance team continuously giving me data, right? That, that is getting updated, right? And machine, my machine um, sensor data, it comes in. I, again, enrich this in this pipeline. I create this stage that the, um, with, with this set of um, you know, fields that I didn't have before, right? I'm sort of, I do a correlation here. And if we here, I start with 10 fields. Here, I probably end up with like 20, 30 fields because I need that for my analysis, right? And then two separate models. One model, I call this model, that is, uh, you know, how many days before the machine starts running hot, right? And again, all I do here is define where my autonomous is. Remember this model name that I use? Um, I, I specify that and, and I'm done. Basically, I go to these, uh, um, you know, to, to my final uh, sort of a, you know, analysis or, or a stage. After I run more analysis on this, as you can see here, uh, it says it's scoring, right? If I go here, I have some scoring data, um, right? Scoring data. These are actually these two pointed. These are number of days, right? And as you can see here, this particular machine needs to be replenished because it's running low in inventory, right? It's as sort of a prediction. So I send my maintenance team to the machine um, to um, to maintain that. Same thing for um, my. Um, machine running, running, uh, running too hot, right? I send a maintenance state. Again, here, um, uh, this stage shows, um, do, do I need to send the maintenance today? Or if the machines are, um, you know, if obviously if the machines are running too hot today, I, I um, basically send that today. 
But if the machines are normal cooling, I want to have it. I want to be prepared, proactive, right? I want to know in how many days are my machines going to be running hot, possibly, right? And in this particular day, this April of 2022, this particular machine shows that it might be running hot and proactively send maintenance team. Um, again, you know, we, we have a variety of, um, in, in this tool, uh, you know, you apply filters, you apply you know, visualizations to, to the data. It's rich set of patterns here um, that you can use um, with these pipelines, as you can see, variety of statistics, um, you know, ready out of the box for you um, that you can apply to the to your model. Um, and if I go back to the catalog, you can define a variety of targets, um, you know, variety of streams of types of data that add to ingest, um, a variety of um, these targets. As you can see here, I have Kafka target, um, object storage, rest, um, you know, S3 and so on. So it's a rich set of um, sort of uh, resources that they apply to your model um, when the data is streaming live. And again, this, this particular use case um, is kind of very, it was very interesting to me. That's why I decided to put it together. And, and I presented this to both the OML team and the stream analytics team and, uh, you know, really with positive feedback. So um, again, I, I'll uh, stop maybe um, here, Marcos, um, and see if there are any questions I, um, I can answer. Um, sure, uh, that's perfect. Thank, thanks a lot, Tadi. So uh, one of the questions that um, we just got was, can real-time dashboards alerting be utilized out of the box in OAC? That's the Oracle Analytics Cloud. Uh, I believe you can't, right? Because that's a pull interface, but I'm not sure if you have um, other comments. Right, there. because once, yeah, because, but your data needs to go to the database right and then oac can actually yes and that's one of the use cases actually we're putting together um uh, for uh, for another um yeah another demo um but data that has to go to database yes okay okay makes sense so we have a question how do you envision the governance to allow data consumers to search for and subscribe to data products in the mesh I, I, the, the governance, right. So basically, uh, yeah, the, the, as data comes in, right, the raw data as it comes in, obviously we have no governance over that, right? This data comes in through a variety of sources, right? Cart, checkout, order, these data keep coming in. Tesla keeps sending data regardless of what we do with it, right? But the way co governance comes when you actually, when you're applying data mesh architecture and data fabric architecture to it, that's where the governance comes in. And of course, definitely at the target, at the, when you're defining your data product. So again, so sort of the se sequence of events is that you basically start with your data products, right? Your data products are getting defined. How do you want to consume these? How do you want to show this? And then you go to the data mesh and sort of uh, uh, create that architecture, then, then apply the, the data mesh to the sources. Again, the, the governance doesn't apply to the, to the source, obviously, right? Because sources are coming in. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I answered that correctly or um, the way you were looking for. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you. Sure. And then, so, um, so the other one would be at the bottom on this diagram in machine, specifically to machine learning. Um, you have what we what we call the derived features. You have a again set of raw data that comes in. Some of those features in that data set is not is not usable, right? You have to create some derived features. So that's part of the data preparation. And again, there's the concept of imbalanced data set in, in a machine learning type environment. Once you recognize that, you can actually possibly balance that data set before you actually send it to training, right? So these are some of the great um, you know sort of use cases that you can do before they get gets uh, before you pre-generate your model. Uh, another question is, does the pipeline support both Onyx and PMML formats? PMML format, yes. Um, Onyx is the, uh, on the roadmap for um, the Stream Analytics team. Um, so um, that's that's the next one that's coming out. Once you create your Onyx and, and with the, you know, Sherry has shared some use cases that shows how you can create a um, Onyx model 
Uh, but that's coming up, yes. But PMML is already there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and in, in the case of Onyx, I mean, I, I would also add that the OML services support Onyx, right? So if you have an Onyx model, then the OML services can serve that as a REST to OSA, right? So then you can you can actually use an Onyx um, model from uh, OML services, just like you're using today as an integration, right, that you're showing, uh, just not directly inside, I guess, the... Um, Exactly. Yeah, right. that's, that's a good point, Marco. So, um, so the difference between the, that source, for instance, like PMML, it's already supported. What you would have to do is you would have to go and create uh, a PMML model model somewhere else, right? Using another tool and something like that. Um, you know, your data science create that model, and then but that model is ready as a PMML format in in your in your um, pipeline. Call that model. Mm -hmm. This particular use case that I just shared is sort of a is kind of really at your fingertips where um, you basically, um, uh, when, once you have a training data set, once you have, you've created a training data set, you can use AutoML, uh, quickly generate your model uh, on the fly, basically, you know, more or less, right? Uh, with the, you know, on the, on the AutoML UI part of it, there's actually no code involved. I, that's really impressive to me, at, at least. Um, and you can, and then you can go back, create another pipeline. So that's, that's what sort of attracted me to this particular use case because it's really right there. And, uh, with little effort, you can actually, um, be able to use the model. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, another, and another question we have uh, here is, uh, since training pipeline uses real time data, are there adequate number of training samples? How frequently the model is retrained for new events? Um, you can, well, uh, I, maybe I, I'll let you guys, maybe uh, Marcos answer that, but basically if you can create a variety of pipelines, right? So you can, so basically if I go back to um, this data set, right? And um, to this pipeline, right? I can create a variety of, as long as these, you know, I have separate tables there because in, in uh, OML, uh, basically these are in database um, sort of machine learning um, uh, you know, mo model creation, right? So as long as I can, de I define a variety of tables, I can create this pipeline as fancy as I like to. Tomorrow, I can create another um, target here, add a stage, go to my pattern, um, you know, and, and, and not in, but go, go to my target, right? Get it to create a target and, and, and define that target and talk, that target could be another um, OML, um, uh, auto, um, uh, sorry, autonomous database table, and basically apply it again. Um, I, I think that's probably the best way I would do it. I, I don't know if I answered that uh, the way you were looking for. Right. No. And and I think he was asking about the um, probably more or less, more related to the the statistical nature of data, right? So is that in, normally when you receive when you want to build a model, you have to have enough data to to build a model so that the model can find patterns, right? If you have only like the last 100 records coming in, then all the patterns throughout the day are not gonna be there. So m I would say mostly you probably wanna create a model with the larger data sets, right, in, in batch, and then potentially add, add the latest data, right, to that model. I wouldn't build a model completely on plain new, brand new data that is coming in because you're really, you know, throwing away all the all the history that is probably important and rich, especially in seasonality, right? So for seasonal products and things like that. So I think that would, you know, I, I would actually add that data and, and, and either refresh the model or have a moving window where you can move to the future and say, okay, I throw away data from, you know, a day, a, a, the, the last day, the oldest day, and then I'm and now fitting in new data from today or something like that. But that that's that was for no, the, that, building the model case, not really that just. A, that's a, a great scenario case. itself, uh, Marcos. As you can see here, what you were saying is that this machine details could be some rich set of data set, right? That um, that very basically def can define my training and data set, and then I can on the fly add this um, sort of uh, streaming data to enrich that, right? Before mm -hmm. I send that to training, I think that's that's a great use case right. itself. Yeah. Right, right. That's that's exactly. I yeah. like that. Yeah. 
Uh, then another question that I think it's more on, on on us is how many different OCI machine learning services available on Oracle Cloud? I know about Oracle Machine Learning Service. Are there any other services for um, of ML and AI? Well, Sonali, um, there are. Um, Oracle has uh, the Oracle Machine Learning, so that is us, right? That the the team that you're talking to today which is the in database algorithms, right? We are running on inside autonomous database, inside Oracle database on premise. You have the OCI data science team that has a specific service for a Jupyter notebooks, um, and then they run Python. So if you're looking for open source tools and open source Python components, that's where you would find uh, probably the most rich um, environment because they also have GPUs and things like that that are for Python. And then Oracle is launching several different AI uh, services now, right? So we have an AI language service, a vision is coming up. Um, so those are uh, REST services that you can just call from within your application for a specific, you know, vision or language or, or some other process. So those are different components that Oracle gives you uh, so that you can have, you know, the most amount of, uh, of tools available, let's say, right, for your projects. Um, I hope, hopefully that uh, answered the question. There's a, one other question here. What is the minimum configuration requirements for OSA? Um, really, that you don't need, need that, that much configuration. Um, in OSA, typically, if I click on, um, these all these resources, right? Basically, what you do is you come up with a stream of data, right? You define define your stream of data, what what uh, um, live data you want to process, and then basically a uh, a connection to what it is that you want to do. You want to connect to the a Golden Gate uh, Trail file. Do you want to connect to the Oracle database or MySQL, or do you want to tap into uh, local Kafka, right? You define these things. Um, very easy to use. Um, you know, one of the um, scenarios that we have, we have a customer, um, you know, a retail customer that um, literally they brought in interns um, from um, uh, from university, right out of the university. And in a matter of uh, two weeks, without previous knowledge of this tool, they put together a really elaborate pipeline. Uh, they, they cut, they, 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 our customer was very impressed. Our team uh, was very impressed with how these two uh, interns quickly did this. Very easy to use, very user friendly. Um, in a matter of minutes, you can actually create a pipeline. Uh, once you have all these, um, you know, your resources sort of lined up, you know, if you know where your, um, you know, where your autonomous is, let's say, let's say, but where your HDFS uh, is, um, you know, uh, and so on. Um, but but very easy to use. And again, auto ML itself too. <laughs> They're both so easy to use. Yeah. Excellent. Um, another question here is for streams of data, we would need a data source to send data continuously row by row. How could we simulate that if we want to do a POC? Um, very simple, CSV files. Yeah, CSV files are a great way to um, create a stream of data. And in fact, uh, some of this uh, simulation that I've done is actually uses CSV files. Um, you know, unless you have actual Golden Gate streams, um, trail files, or Kafka topics that you want to process, CSV files are a great way to do this. Um, you can create these streams with CSV files. Yeah, very, very easy to use. Well, I think we have no more uh, specific questions. Uh, so um, I, would, uh, I would like to say just uh, thank you very much, Hadi, for your session it was very 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 interesting and very interactive and i think people got a lot out of it and um really just uh thank you and really appreciate you for joining and and thank you guys and uh, uh, talk to you guys uh, next week thanks so much marcus appreciate it thank you